Hey there, today we'll have a look at how to build the functional foundation of an application with the no-code app builder, then how to seamlessly publish it to the marketplace, and then install it from the marketplace into the Neptune DXP so we can integrate the application or continue a more advanced development of it via the app designer. The flow looks like this. Starting with the app builder, creating an application from scratch, we'll learn how to work with the no-code tool and understand a range of its features. From moving and adjusting building blocks to adding images and data, as well as generating parts of the app automatically. We'll then publish the app to the marketplace before installing the app into the Neptune DXP via the marketplace, before finally integrating the app with a live API within the low-code app designer. Before we get stuck in, let me introduce you to the Neptune Marketplace. From now on, it's going to be the central hub to access and manage all of your Neptune DXP artifacts, app builder apps, application building blocks, templates, code snippets, and even ready-made solutions delivered by partners. The app builder and the marketplace are both new additions to the Neptune DXP this year in 2022. The app designer is the tried and tested workhorse, low code app development tool. Directly from the app builder, we can publish to the marketplace. The marketplace then acts as a hub where we can host any number of application building blocks, such as these app builder apps, or more specialized functionalities such as barcode scanning logic, all the way up to SAP templates, which are all ready to install, use as is, integrate into applications, or change to your liking within your own DXP. So why use this development flow? Mainly to save time. For the app builder, we have the optimized drag and drop experience with hundreds of pre-made building blocks to be used as is or adjusted to fit your use case. Within the app builder, you can quickly adjust between mobile and desktop views, allowing you to prove the responsiveness of applications. You can utilize the built-in sharing features of the app builder to capture direct feedback and usage data to feedback into the development cycle. An app built with the app builder is a forward compatible proof of concept. You have quick deployment of applications to your team or to the entire world via the marketplace, ready to be installed in both the SAP and open edition modules. The app builder and the marketplace are available within the Neptune portal. You can find them both on the home screen once you've logged in. If you don't have an account, it's free and quick to register and to access the portal. The app designer is available within the cockpit of either the SAP or the open edition modules. A quick detail around accessing each of these components. A DXP portal user provides you free access to the app builder and browsing of the marketplace. Any apps published to the marketplace are either available for everyone to see or they can be private. So only members of the same account, this is just your organization, within the portal can see it. DXP platform users, and these are likely to be developers, have access to the low-code app designer, but can also log in to the DXP portal within either module to access any private products. To summarize, this flow is ideal for facilitating the business user with a free, easy to access and capable no-code app designer with the ability to publish their ideas or project foundations to the marketplace. The low-code developer can then browse these, plus many other free to install application building blocks and templates to install directly into their system to utilize within the low-code app designer. For any other details around these tools, visit the Neptune community to find our documentation. So let's get started. We'll kick things off by opening the portal. As soon as you open up the portal, you'll be able to see the app builder directly here within the developer tools. You can create a new project or open an existing one straight from this interface. The app builder is also available as a link within both the open and SAP edition cockpits. Once you open the app builder, you'll be presented with your recently edited applications that you can jump straight back into. You can open a full list of applications available, or of course you can create a new one. Each application is associated with an account. You can either choose to add your application to an account, so then everyone else within the account can see it as well, 
or you can choose to use your own sandbox, which is your own private area within the app builder. Here I'll make an application within my sandbox. We'll select the tablet preview type and hit next step. You can choose to start with a template straight from a data source or even from a sketch that you can upload. However, for this example, we'll start with a blank screen. You can see all the screens of your app on the left, the main interface in the middle, and all of your building blocks are available on the right hand side. There are hundreds of building blocks available, so feel free to look all the way through and see what suits your use case. At the top is a search bar. Here we can search for an attendance card, or of course we can select a filter and apply that against the list of building blocks to see all of the building blocks within a particular category. You can hover over any of them to see a live preview of what it would look like within the interface. Here let's add the attendance card into our app by just dragging and dropping it. There will be a popover suggesting the most popular next components that you may want to add in. Feel free to give these a go. You can always undo at the top of the interface. We'll add one more building block here, a news card. And then we'll select our attendance card and duplicate it. Now, if we clear our search and clear our filter, we can search for our layout building blocks. These are great for aligning content within our application. If we drag a horizontal box into our app, we can then select our card and move it inside of the box. Let's do the same for the other one. Now we can see that they're both inside of this one layout container. Let's remove the static height of this container so it fits whatever is inside. And now we can see on a larger screen size how that horizontal box is behaving. We can then start to align our content within either to the end so that they're separated out or for our example let's stick with space between. We'll add one more horizontal box underneath and then we'll move our main news card inside. Before selecting the box remember it has a static height so let's remove that and then we can place the content to the center of the box. To move items around, simply click and drag them. It's easier to move multiple items when they live inside the same container. You can click once to select an entire component, and then after a second wait, you can click again to select a component within. It's then simple to adjust properties such as different styles or the text contained within a component. It's always handy to know that you can double click on a component to go to the parent. Let's change our buttons on the first card and then let's change the width here of the second card. I'll quickly speed through adding a few more building blocks to the application, including an income card, some contact details, and then this task manager, which I'll arrange to the end of the layout box. So then in a smaller screen size, everything will wrap and stack nicely. You can also add a header to the page, and then we can use the right click to bring back the recommendations. And in this case, we'll add a title in. Managing the images within your App Builder application is easy. Any image component you can select and then choose the image property to bring up the media library. Neptune provides some default images for you to use. However, you can always import your own into your own root folder and then simply select it to replace the component image on the page. You can always access the media library with the button on the toolbar. Here you can delete anything from the media library as well as being able to set page backgrounds. Now let's have a look at adding data into our App Builder application. To demonstrate this, I'll jump into a open edition cockpit that we have running and I'll bring up the Swagger UI tool. Here I have an API which is pointing to one of our SAP systems. 
using the Swagger interface, I can execute that API, and then I can simply copy and paste the response into the app builder. Back inside the app builder, we can hit the manage data button on the toolbar. We can see that Neptune also provides some test data sets for you to utilize. Within each tab, you can see the actual data sets as well as all of the properties that are passed from that data set. We can add our own custom test data, either by manually pasting it or in importing from an Excel document. In this case, we'll create a new one manually. We'll just give it a name and then we can paste in the response from our API into the data tab. This will then be automatically passed so we can see all of the properties here that we can utilize within our app. Let's save it and then simply ticking the box will add it to our application. We can then hit the next arrow here and actually begin to generate some interface components based on this data. Let's choose to generate a table in a new screen. Here we just simply need to select the array within our data set to bind to the table and then we can automatically generate some components for the interface by just selecting which properties we want to create from here. Now that's been added to a second screen we can see the table here along with the connected data inside. You can always change the connected data source by clicking this button and selecting any other test data associated with your app. Within each column we can see the bindings to the test data and then to the property. You can also adjust these by clicking this binding button and selecting any other property in your test data. With this all set up we can then jump into run mode. We can see that this will then generate based on that test data a full table showing all of the data based on the bindings. Now we can jump back and forth between our two screens and we can even demonstrate how when you add a second screen to your app the navigation button will automatically be configured to send you back to the previous screen. But we do want to set up a button to take us to our second screen. So let's choose this button on the header and we have this go to screen action where we can simply select the name of the screen we wish to navigate to and now that's going to be configured. If we jump back into run mode we can select this button and we'll be able to navigate to our page with the table and back to our home page. Up on the top here we have all of our sharing options. The direct link will share a link directly to another person to edit your app builder application and the share button will generate a QR code which you can distribute alternatively you can copy the link using the buttons on the header which will enable people to see a live preview of the run mode of your application. This preview will automatically capture heat map data and allow you to also capture user feedback. Within the top right of the app builder as well we have the advanced mode switch. If you switch this on you'll have access to all of the basic components which are used to create the building blocks and you'll also have visibility of the component tree on the left hand side of the application. You can select any of these components to highlight them within your application. Also up here you can find your application settings as well as the ability to export your app to the open edition or the SAP edition as a file which you can then import. If we select app settings we'll be able to switch our application from our sandbox to one of our assigned accounts. By running through this change wizard we can choose to move or copy the application along with choosing what we wish to do with the test data associated with this app. In this case we'll create a new copy inside of our main account. And Now here we can see the app behaving just the same way but within the Neptune account. Now let's have a look at publishing to the marketplace. You can choose to publish privately, which will only be visible to people within your account in the marketplace, or publicly, which will be visible to anyone who accesses the marketplace. Hitting publish will confirm that you're okay with sharing all of your application along with any test data or images associated with it. If you accept, then the application will be published. 
Here you can see the version and the date and time it was published. Turning on the live marketplace preview will share the run mode of your application within the marketplace product. In this case, let's turn it on. Now we can jump into the portal, open up the marketplace, and within we can see our featured products as well as all our product categories. On the left, we have our App Builder applications. Here we can see some public and private App Builder products. Since we're logged in via the portal, we can see any private products associated with our account. If we sort by date added, we can see the application we've just published here with its live preview on the product page. Since I'm within the portal, this can't be installed. However, we can simply open the marketplace from within a DXP cockpit. The same marketplace is presented here, except now if we open up the App Builder applications and we find the application we've just published, we have the ability to install it straight into our system. Simply click install, and then you'll be presented with a link to open the application inside the App Designer. This application is exactly the same as built in the App Builder. We can run it in the preview mode here, except now you have access to the full low-code tooling of the App Designer. We can see the table on our second page here as well. This imports the test data as well. So we can see that it's set up in this init statement and set to our model called test data. The table is then using the model path to point to that model. If we unlock our application, we can add an API and start connecting this to a real API source. We can add the API component, search for the API that we used the test data from earlier, select that, set the init load to online so it triggers when the app starts, and then adding an Ajax success event, we can utilize a code snippet, which is also available to download from the marketplace, which is just one simple line allowing you to swap out the response to replace the test data init statement. Simply take the root name from your test data init and paste it in here. We can now disable the init JavaScript so that we're running purely off the live API. If we activate our application and head back to the preview, we'll be able to see the same functionality as before. If we jump to the My Account page with the table populated, except this time from the live API source. If we look back at our marketplace product, we can see the title isn't exactly ideal. We can edit it by logging in using our DXP portal credentials here within the cockpit, or we can simply visit the portal where we'll be automatically logged in. If you select your account items, you'll be able to see all of the products associated with your account. And if you're an account admin or you created the product, you will have edit permissions. Here we can jump in and edit the title to include some spaces. We can also add our own custom icon by drag and dropping it to replace the automatically generated one. Once we're happy, we can hit update. And now the new product will be reflected with the new icon and title. Whilst you're in the marketplace within the cockpit, Feel free to explore the application building blocks which are available. Anything that's been installed in your system will offer a reinstall button, but anything that's new inside of your system will offer you a install button. Here we can install this system copy product. And then once installed, simply search for the development package tool. And if you sort by the changed on date, you'll be able to see the one that you've just installed at the very top of the list. Since a package is installed, you can have any number of artifacts brought in, which can be edited using these buttons on the right.